So, um, yeah, it's great to be at FOSTEM, and FOSTEM is a really cool event, and actually, um, so I'm also an event organizer. Uh, I'm running, for example, the Open Tech Summit in um, Germany, in Berlin every year, and uh, I've also lived for many years in Asia, and I'm still like at least half of uh, my time during the year in Asia, and we started the FOSS Asia community. So that was a, a goal that we had with Eventier. We wanted to have an event system that we can use ourselves. So, um, yeah, so here you see, for example, uh, the community, it's pretty big. Um, like, uh, we have, like, at some events, more than 3,000 people who participate, and we wanted, like, an event system that is completely open, of course. Um, and, yeah, so what's the status today? Um, we have a lot of members in the community, and um, among like different projects that we have, the open event um, server, for example, is our uh, lead project with uh, 1,600 um, uh, stars, so it means like people follow it and, and check out what's going on, and, and um, many also contribute. So we're really happy about that, but what's the story behind it? So the story is that... Um, um, we started 2009 with our first events, and it was like basically get people together, uh, have some fun. Uh, we were in Asia, and we felt a little bit left out, yeah, because we didn't have a FOSTEM uh, in, in, in the region. There are many smaller events, but we didn't have this uh, spirit. So we started to make an event, and yeah, what do you do? You need ticketing, you need to plan, like sometimes we have catering and this and that, right? And so what we did is we used uh, systems like Eventbrite, for example, um, or we used Meetup. And then there were a few systems, for example, that, that uh, also here, uh, Pentabaf or FRAP, uh, used by the CCC in Germany. So systems like that, but they were mainly for the, um, uh, for the speakers, let's say. And um, they weren't always in technologies that we were familiar with. So this was the idea, let's make a system, not just for ticketing, though, also for speaker handling and, um, yeah, larger events, up to 3,000 people. And what are, were the requirements? Free and open source. Technology stack that matches our team and community. So something that we can handle ourselves where we don't have to ask somebody else. Um, and we want to keep privacy in mind. So we don't always want to upload all our data to some uh, proprietary services um, like that. Another thing is, while we were developing it and while we were studying it, we also saw other people had similar ideas. They also wanted an event system, but maybe they had a different focus and so on. So an idea that we also always follow is open standards. For example, if you export an event or something like that, we want other people to be able uh, um, to use our data in their system or we use their data in one of our components. And that also means um, open APIs. And all this, of course. So we are here at FOSTEM, and I think uh, I don't need to go more into detail there. So what were our goals in regards to um, the features? Um, we thought we don't have to make a completely different experience to what people know. People know Eventbrite, they know other systems, so we can follow this approach, have the same process uh, in regards for ticketing, for example. Then the call for speakers. So um, I worked also like a while with some people at uh, Mozilla, and I know they also run events with a thousand people, and a lot of these events are still managed by spreadsheets. Yeah. So this was also something that we wanted to get away. We had also like a lot of spreadsheets, and then we started at one point to get out uh, um, like some data through like Google Docs uh, using JSON and so on. We wanted to get away from this, have an easy process where every speaker can update their own uh, session and so on easily. At Fostum is possible today, but it wasn't always possible uh, in the past. And an important thing to save us time as organizers, drag and drop, uh, dra uh, drag and drop scheduling. Yeah, exporting, of course, I already mentioned that, um, and uh, a thing that we realized after a, a few years, I love Drupal, um, I love Django, I love all these um, um, uh, systems, but if you have to maintain an old system just for the sake of maintaining it, it could be really a pain. So we want like a, a website that's generated uh, and that we can just host on FTP server or today on, on GitHub pages or GitLab pages, something like that. Um, and of course, like, when you have everything, like people use a mobile phone, so Android is a big topic, um, things like that. Uh, plus, features content-wise, these proprietary systems, they uh, don't have the possibility to license your content freely, to say, okay, the um, uh, content that you have 
make it free. They don't have always the possibility to enter a code of conduct. It's very important in the US, for example. So these kind of things, uh, they're here. So we started the development. And uh, um, yeah, today we have a lot of different components. Um, we have a web front end um, that uh, uh, yeah, runs the website. We have um, the API server. That's the back end. So after several iterations now, we achieved to separate the front end and the back end. Yeah? Like at the beginning, uh, sometimes it was like, we have to get it done. The, the event is approaching our big event, and we need this, this, this or that feature. So the code wasn't always that clean. Uh, and uh, now we achieve to really separate it uh, cleanly. And we have an end attendee app uh, on Android. Um, uh, also, like actually, I'm personally not using iOS, but it seems like other people are um, excited to develop on iOS. So yeah, cool, let's get everyone on board. And why not open this iOS uh, uh, universe also up yeah, as much as possible? So um, um, yeah, so you can export all your data, and you can generate websites and have an output. and. Uh, um, yeah, this is a bit an overview. So which components do we have today uh, here? What, what are the um, uh, technologies we're using? So on the back end, uh, for example, on the second row here, you see Flask and Python. Um, the front end, we use um, the Ember.js. Uh, yeah, basically, it's always a decision what are the developers comfortable with, right? And uh, yeah, it's pretty uh, standard. But you see, uh, we have a lot of goals. and. Um, yeah, open event website generator, 90% of goals are reached. The other parts still like, um, yeah, some to-dos here. So how does it look like? I always like to run people through live, but I'm always not sure like how's, how's, the, how's the internet. So I, I took some screenshots, but you can go on the uh, website and uh, um, it's pretty stable. You can try it out. Um, so when you go to the website, there's a button. Uh, you say create event and you have the option to um, add a name to add a location. Um, here, for example, the thing that we have is uh, um, we're still using um, uh, Google Docs, uh, so uh, there's an open issue to switch to OpenStreetMap. But you can enter all the basic details of the event and um, can get started pretty quickly. Then, of course, ticketing. So ticketing is important for us. Um, we are in Asia. Many people want to buy a community ticket or supporter ticket. Um, so we need the, the abilities to have different ranges. And um, that is uh, pretty much the equivalent of what Eventbrite uh, offers these days. Um, yeah, I mean, I think not, not much words needed here. And uh, payments, so payment, we are supporting already PayPal and uh, Stripe. So Stripe is a service for uh, credit cards. And we are looking to uh, implement more and more uh, payment gateways. Um, yeah, also, for example, uh, like I don't know here in, in Belgium what payment gateways you have. In Germany, a different payment gateways in India. Yeah. OK, so then you click on uh, Save and Proceed. And there's the option to add sponsors. Nowadays, uh, like uh, the community has a lot of um, uh, support from uh, big companies. They're using free and open source software. So you can add these sponsors here in the next step. And in the third step, um, you can always switch it on and off. You see this button there, switch it on and off. So if you have an event where you don't need any speaker handling, you just switch it off. If you have an event with speaker handling, you can go into detail here. And uh, you can add tracks. You can add micro locations, so basically rooms um, and uh, session types. And you can change the colors then. and um, yeah, um, how it will uh, show up uh, with your um, schedule in the end. Then call for speakers is important. Um, it's pretty straightforward as well, but you see here a private link. Why a private link? So sometimes we have uh, people, they're high profile. Uh, they miss the deadline of the call for speakers, but we already told them we really want to have them on board, right? Uh, and uh, so we can send them a private link, and they can still sign up after the deadline is closed. And uh, uh, form registration. So, so what do you actually want to ask your speakers? Or uh, what session details do you want to ask? So you can um, uh, provide the option here to ask something. And there's in future, of course, would be great to have a, a form builder here as well. OK, collect speaker details. And then like, what are the options? Um, here, um, you can have an overview. So this event that I uh, started here, of course, didn't get any income yet. But like, you will have an overview. You can add discount tickets and so on. For example, for us uh, in, in uh, Singapore, it's always very important to have discount tickets. Uh, we want that the companies pay. 
Yeah, we want that they pay for the business ticket um, because we have to pay for the room. We have to do. Uh, we have a lot of costs, but we want to give free tickets to the community or to special groups. So um, this comes in very handy. And then this is something that really saves us a lot of weeks: the scheduler. So after the speakers all applied, filled in uh, the form and so on, we have the scheduler. And in the scheduler then, all the uh, unscheduled talks will here uh, uh, be shown on the left. And then you can drag and drop them. So the rooms will show up and you drag and drop them into the room um, and into the time that you want. So honestly, this really saves a lot, a lot of time. And uh, yeah, we were really happy that we were able to get this going. And um, uh, of course, you can also export this um, as a PNG or as in uh, other formats. What else do we have? So we have uh, an overview here of uh, the speakers, um, which talks are accepted, some basic information. You can click on it, edit it. Um, and very important, we have a way to export uh, all the event data. There's an API here that you can use. So, um, yeah, how do we use it, for example, here? This is uh, 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 an example of um, a website that was generated based on this data. So how does it work here? You see, you enter your email, you enter some uh, basic information, you add the JSON file or link to the export uh, um, file, and then you generate a website. It's a bit sped up here, so we can keep the time, um, but uh, this is uh, basically how it works. You can have a, a dark or a light theme um, and you can generate your own website and upload it to GitHub pages and you have the speakers, you have different uh, options here, um, uh, different different uh, pages that you can say uh, all the uh, links of the sessions and so on. Pretty nice, a uh, really nice alternative to uh, sketch.org, yeah, chat.org, uh, I don't know if you have heard this, uh, so many companies using it, the Linux Foundation uses it for example, but here we have a uh, free and open source alternative. Then of course the Android app here, there are some screenshots, you can find it uh, on the Play Store uh, or on F-Droid and uh, a picture of a recent community event that we had in India. Uh, actually, uh, we are proud to say that most of our developers are from Asia, so it's a real global project and uh, they're, they're, they're using it here. So what's next? Of course, a lot is uh, left. You need badges, for example, for events. This is something that we're working on. So we started a project Badge Yay. We're always getting excited. So we like to call things uh, Badge Yay or Event Yay. Um, and uh, then we're moving um, uh, uh, currently to the next version. You can try it out on next.eventyay.com. Um, I talked to you about it. It's the uh, completely like separated uh, API in front, front end. Um, automatic deployment. We were using um, Google Cloud and Kubernetes for a while. Um, yeah, it's quite expensive if you're not sponsored continuously by Google. So uh, we moved to a much uh, cheaper solution. But um, still, like uh, um, the automatic deployment is not working so smoothly. So we're working on that. Um, and more users in the community. So we want more events to use it. We are all free and open source. So let's uh, um, uh, use it. Um, get the system stable, less bugs. So uh, we actually need people who tell us what specifically is not working for them, uh, rather than saying something's not working, right? And uh, yeah, finalize the mobile apps, um, adding cool features. There's always more uh, what we can do. And um, yeah, here's a call for contribution. We have a Force Asia internship program. We also run an open source hotel in Vietnam. I think Hong Phuc talked about it like an hour ago quickly. And uh, um, yeah, we always participate in GSOC. I hope we get in this year. So there are lots of opportunities to collaborate with us. But also when you run an event, you have uh, the possibility to join us. So thank you very much. And let's get started. Um, join us, uh, for example, here at the Next Force Asia Summit, March 14 to 17, um, or check out the projects online. And um, yeah, I could talk for hours if the next speaker doesn't come. So I have a lot like I could show you like, uh, um, how things work uh, in, in detail, but like, uh, uh, if not, you can come to our booth um, in um, K, K Hall, um, or you can talk to me uh, directly. That's it. Thank you very much. <laughs>